What's up, YouTube? Today I'm answering all of your questions that you have for me about structural engineering. Let's get into it. How do you find solutions slash resolve problems in engineering items without going to your principal first? This is a great one. I try to keep this simplistic for me. I put myself in the shoes of, of the principal or the engineer record that's gonna be signing this thing. Flip it and say, okay, what if it's me who has to stamp this? What if it's you who has to stamp this? What questions do you have in front of you and what, what things do you want answered that get you to a level where you're comfortable to put your own stamp on this? And it's not just for unique situations. You should have this mindset throughout all of your engineering when there's somebody else who's going to be stamping it. So that's just the mindset. But uh, how do you resolve the problems? I create kind of a checkbox for myself and I say, okay, well, I would want to run calculations here. I want to know this critical connection. I want to know this critical piece and component here for the lateral system. This area here is most critical, critical for gravity. And you go through and you start figuring out those areas. There will be times when you just approach a spot and you say, I don't know how how to do this or I'm not familiar with it. Now at this point, you take your best shot. That's the biggest takeaway here is to try and not just once half-heartedly and then run off to someone and get and ask them to do it or how to do it. Um, try four, five, six times. Really give it your all as if you were graded on it or as if, again, your stamp relied on it. You will find that you will get so much further along in the process than you originally thought by just trying to seek help. Even if you get it wrong, that's the point is not that you, if you try that you need to get it right. Most of the time you'll probably get it wrong, but you'll be amazed at how much closer you get to the solution than you, than you thought previously. And that critical thinking period is, is so powerful. You understand that process in and out because you had to think about it so hard. And as soon as they give you that missing piece, you instantly connect all the dots and go, ah, I fully understand this. And now for the future, you never forget how to do that. You'll always remember it. And by you trying before you talk to a colleague, having feedback from you to say, but what about this? But what about this problem? But what does that answer this right here? And then they can go further with their explanation, which just hmm, is, uh, is the best part about engineering. Those, those conversations, are what really help you grow. How can we avoid burnout in our industry, especially due to deadlines and long hours? <sighs> no matter the type of company, structural engineering wise, big or small, you are going to run into deadlines at some point in your life. You're going to have stressful situations at some point in your life. To avoid it does not mean that you need to switch careers. Every career out there, almost every career, I don't know all of them, but I want to make a bet that almost every single career path out there has some type of stressful point that, uh, that you would have to go through. So don't think that to avoid stress means to avoid structural engineering. Absolutely not. From my experience, I think there is a difference in the size of company that you work for. Really large companies versus medium to smaller companies usually have different work portfolios that they bring in. Uh, the larger companies usually have more complex, larger, bigger budget, kind of centerpiece projects. On top of, they will have significantly more work most of the time just coming in in general. Um, the reach of a larger company means just significantly more work. And you may say, well, that's because they have more engineers to take it on. Well, <laughs> yes and no. If properly managed, you would hope that the number of employees equate to the, you know, evenly distributed workload for eight hours a day every day. But unfortunately, the type of work that we do ebbs and flows. It comes in waves. And to keep that giant wheel turning for a larger company, it's more beneficial to take on as much work as possible and then kind of sort through it as you move forward. But what that can create is many, many deadlines and therefore a lot of stress. So while I don't think you can avoid stress, I think you can minimize it. And a way to do so if you're in an environment like that is one, to identify it and realize I have deadline after deadline after deadline, week after week after week. Um, and then if it's identified that, well, it's just the busy season, you know, this will calm down. But if you go through multiple years and then take a step back again and say, the weeks just keep rolling and the deadlines just keep rolling. There is no busy season. It's just all season. If that's the case, you realize that you're in a place where there is just an overabundance of work, which is, which is a great thing. 
I'm never knocking having a lot of work. You always wanna have work instead of not having work, that's for sure. But if you are in an environment like that, the next step you need to take is discussing with your managers and with your principal. Let them know your bounds, let them know how much workload you have. Because while it's their responsibility to plan out the workload for you, ultimately they're gonna try to maximize your uh, proficiency and how much you can handle. Give them feedback. It doesn't need to be angry feedback or you don't need to be to the point where you are stressed and burned out to then talk to them and you're, you're just all disheveled. Identify it early and let them know that you're at capacity so that when more work comes in, they don't just pile it on top. You need to work together to understand your bounds and how much you do want to be working. What's the most efficient way for you to develop a calc package? There's a lot of different ways that you can develop one. There's no right way to do it. There is a wrong way to do it. But for me, I think the most efficient way overall, and this is advice I was given by uh, an engineer who's one of the best engineers that I've ever worked with, create more figures on your calc packages. Draw more pictures. Everybody likes picture books because they're easy to understand and they get very complex points across way easier than just text. Just because a calculation package is big doesn't mean it's good. You want to keep it simplistic, but you want to contain the math that's in there that proves that everything works. The more figures you have, the better you can convey information more quickly to the reviewer. Think about it like you're sitting through a PowerPoint presentation. You get that slide that pops up and it's like text heavy. You know what this is gonna be? It's gonna be me doing this. Your brain is gonna instantly put up that barrier and not wanna absorb it because it's difficult and it takes time. Use a figure in tandem next to your uh, equations that shows whether it's statics or the connection or the overall uh, load path that you're simplistically trying to prove works. It helps guide the reviewer through the calculations. So picture books, figures, put them on your calc package. What's your long-term goal as a structural engineer? I wanna be kind of the jack of all trades. I don't wanna be someone who specializes on a specific kind of engineering or building material. I wanna be dangerous in concrete. I wanna be dangerous in wood, steel, masonry, all of them. I want to be able to get my hands into any kind of project and provide feedback and provide design support and provide guidance. I don't need to be the master of concrete. You know, oh, that's the guy who's done concrete for 30 years, um, but that's, as soon as, you know, you ask him about a two by four, all of a sudden he's like, ah, 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 ah wood, I, I don't even know where to begin. While some people have a crazy passion for a certain building material, I don't knock that at all. I think that's super cool and I'm glad you found that passion and love that so much um, because there is something to be said that each building material, you could spend a lifetime getting into an understanding, but that's not the route for me. I wanna be the engineer who's the jack of all trade. That way it does, I don't exclude myself from certain types of work or certain types of cool things. When I see a cool project arise, I know comfortably that I can get involved in it and I can be of really good service. I've also realized that I wanna become a more conventional type of structural engineer and uh, you can probably tell what that's in YouTube uh, I have found this passion that I didn't even realize I had and this whole kind of teaching and mentoring through a uh, through a different means through a different medium something that I want to continue to grow with all of you reach more engineers and uh, and help them become better engineers for the future. I want to take the knowledge of a principal with you know, 35 years of experience and convey that information to the first five years of young engineers so that they get up to speed to the same level as that principal and then they have the remainder of their career to advance, to become even better, to ascend to the next step to learn better designs, better building practices, more economical, just everything about an engineer and elevating it to the next level. That's the goal I wanna have is that hybrid of being a professional, but also being that mentor that can I can hopefully help thousands, if not millions of engineers instead of just five or 20 that are in a physical office space. What was the most stressful time in your structural engineering career? And what was the most rewarding one? Believe it or not, you may think that it's, uh, oh, you know, maybe me preparing for the SE exam or it's when I was studying for the PE exam or it's when I failed the FE exam the first time. If you want to hear that crazy story, thumbnail up above. Don't click off the video, check it out afterwards. But it's not any of those. It's really <laughs> when, simplistically put, 
when I started this, this channel. Um, there was um, an unfortunate conflict with my professional career and my, I guess I'll call this my creative career with all of you. And I was ultimately given a choice where I had to eliminate one or the other. And at the time, I didn't think it was that big a deal. But then when I was faced uh, with this choice, I realized how much um, I, I wanted both. I wanted both. Obviously, I love structural engineering, so I'm not going to give that up by any means. But just as much, I realized how much I needed slash wanted to continue YouTube and continue this channel and help support all of you out there. Both of them hand in hand just complement one another so well. It keeps me studying, it keeps me learning new things, it helps me uh, explain concepts to myself as I'm explaining them to you. That helps my professional career and then my professional career I learn so much more and I make mistakes and then I can convey them to, to all of you so that you can avoid them or grow with them. But to, to be faced with one or the other was, was definitely the most uh, stressful time in my engineering career. And the flip side of that coin, what was the most rewarding, uh, was on the same subject. I was fortunate that I got over that hurdle and I found myself at a place where I was given the opportunity to continue to do both. <laughs> I, you know, maybe, when the day comes that I obtain my SE, maybe that'll trump it. I think there's many, many great things to come that I'm excited about, but for this point in time, having the opportunity to do both and expand and grow both is the most rewarding thing that I've achieved thus far. And the most important question of all, how do you get a boyfriend or girlfriend as a structural engineer? Well, come here, come a little closer. There's one tip that I'm gonna help all of you with. The first thing that you're gonna do is 